Big general. So Chai Wang is from Zhejiang. One year, he drank wine at a wild temple on tomb sweeping day, where an ancient clock, the size of a two-stone urn, was held to the ground in front of the temple, with fresh, clean marks of hand grabbing on end under the clock. He was so taken aback that he looked down at the clock, inside a small bamboo basket, that could hold about eight liters, and there was nothing in the basket. He sent several men to grab the bell ears, and they fought hard, and the ancient bell was still alive. More alarmed, Chai Wang continued to sit down and drank, waiting for the man who had hidden something in the clock. After a while, a young beggar comes and piles the begging food on one side of the clock, then lifts the clock with one hand and grabs the food into the basket with the other hand several times in a row before putting the food out. And then I'm still holding the clock. I'm leaving. After a short while, he returned. Lift off the clock. Eat the food. Eat the clock and pick it up, as easily as opening a cabinet. Chai Wang and everyone in this room were horrified. How can you ask for food when you're a man like you? Mr. Chai asked from his feet. The beggar replied, I'm a big man, and no one wants to hire me. Chai Wang saw his strength and urged him to go out of the army. Beggars have no way out. Chai Wang then took him home to make him a full meal, estimating that he would eat five or six times more than the average person. I changed his clothes and shoes and gave him 50 pairs of silver for the road fare, sent him off to the army. More than a decade later, a nephew of Mr. Chai's worked as a county official in Fujian. A general named Wu Liu suddenly visited him. During the conversation, the general asked the sheriff, Who is Chai Wang? It's my uncle. I wonder where he's been with the general, Mr. Cha replied. The general said, He was my teacher for 10 years, and I miss him very much. Please tell him to come to my house as a guest. The Chishou County commander gave a cavalier reply, thinking, Uncle is a famous Confucian. How can there be any martial arts students? Soon after, Chai Wango arrived at his nephew's place, and Chai Wanji told him about it. Chai Wango couldn't remember. Ina asked himself to be interviewed with respectful urgency. Chai Wang is on his way to visit with his servants. The general rushed out the gate. Mr. Chai Wang looked at him and knew nothing of him, suspicious that the general had mistaken him for someone else. However, the general was more deferential to him, invited the guests into the house, and then passed through three or four doors. In the hospital, there were women coming and going. Chai Wang knew that this was the general's inner yard and couldn't help but stand still. The general asks him to go further in, and later he enters the house, only to see the young concubines lift the curtains and move the chairs. After Chai Wang took his seat, I just wanted to know that I had a concubine to serve him. The general was in a hurry to get up and change his clothes, and Chai Wang wondered what he was doing. The boys helped the general dress up and the general ordered a few people to keep Chai Wang from getting up. Mr. Chai Wang was stunned and did not understand what was going on. The general finished, then changed into his civilian clothes and sat with him, laughing. Mr. Don't you remember the beggar with the bell? Chai Wang is suddenly awake. After a while, the general laid out a feast. The music starts down there. After drinking, the general went to range accommodation for Chai Wang and ordered some concubines to serve him before he left. The next day, Chai Wang was so drunk that he greeted the general several times outside his bedroom door. When Chai Wang learned of it, he was very upset and wanted to leave. The general locked the gate and refused to leave. General Chai Wang Jian did nothing else for several days. He only counted the servants and girls, mule instruments and Jane's clothes in the house supervised the book, making registration by himself, and cautioned against omission. Chai Wang thought it was a matter for the general's family, so he didn't ask. One day, the general, with a register of all his belongings, told Chai Wang's, I can have today, thanks to Sir Alex. Now a slave, an object, I dare not enjoy alone, please give half of my fortune to Sir. Chai Wang was stunned and resolutely dismissed. The general refused and took out tens of thousands of silver stashed in the vault and split it in two. Half of the old fun and bed items are listed according to the register book, and the inside and outside of the house are almost full. After Chai Wang stopped him repeatedly, 
the general ignored his name and ordered half of his servants to pack their belongings and the maids to pack their utensils. He told them to take good care of him, and the servants promised. The general watched the concubines get on the bus, the servants set up the mules, and made a joyous journey before saying goodbye to Chai Wang. Later, Chai Wang was arrested and jailed in connection with the case of Xu Shi. The final acquittal was the result of General Wu's efforts. All right, this story has come to an end. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you.